Lord God, the Father, this ask you to bless this time, Lord, to the honor of the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord God, let it be pleasing and a blessing to you, Lord God. We open up your word, Lord, without error. For Jesus' sake we pray. Amen. 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 All right, so, John, chapter 1. And we'll start reading 14, where we left off. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as if the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. John bare witness of him, that's John the Baptist, not only John the Apostle, but John the Baptist. So already we have 13 people, a minimum, eyewitnesses of Jesus Christ, and for John the Baptist, partial of his ministry. As soon as Jesus went into his ministry, John is beheaded. But we have, from 30 years old, John telling, hey, there is this man, he is the Lamb of God, I can, uh, I can tell you and be a witness of that. And then you got the 12 uh, disciples that lived and breathed with Jesus. Bear witness of him and cry, saying, this was he, Jesus, of whom I spanked, so John's been preaching and preparing the people for Jesus. And it's no different, but the aspect is we're doing the same thing John the Baptist is doing. It's a different message. John the Baptist's message of the gospel is the kingdom's coming. Here comes the king. A king that they would reject. They don't have the kingdom yet. Upon the cross of Jesus, Pilate wrote the king of the Jews. They reject him. He will become back the second advent. But his, John the Baptist's message, here comes the Messiah. That is supposed to be what every Jew is supposed to be looking forward to. The Messiah coming. John is, here he comes. Now for us, when we preach, Jesus is coming. Not the Messiah, but the Savior. We go out there, we tell the gospel that Jesus Christ suffered and died. Jesus is just starting his ministry now. He suffered and died according to Scripture, was buried and rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. We go out there and tell him he's coming for the church, the rapture. And if that rapture would happen in our time, right now, and they don't get saved, they're going to be left behind pretty much 90% of no hope. I mean, there's a little bit of hope in the tribulation period, but not much. And if they were to die without Jesus Christ, our message is you're going to go to hell. Mm -hmm. So we preach Jesus, the same Jesus John preached, but we do not have that same message of John. And churches today, the church we've had, uh, the kingdom something, we're not looking for a kingdom, we're not looking for a piece of land. We're looking for a man. Israel is looking for a man and land. And the whole aspect of the Jews and why they rejected Jesus, we want a man. He cannot be God, because the Bible says there's one God. That's the problem the Jew has with worshiping Jesus. There's God, and then there's Jesus of God. They think it's two different gods. They want a piece of land. They want a king over that land. And when they cry when Jesus comes to Jerusalem, uh, Hosanna to the highest, they're expecting Jesus to come in on that mule, like David did, and conquer Rome and destroy the world and give us our land. That's what they expect. They did not expect misreading, miss the prophecy that that suffering Messiah. And that's the problem. John is coming and saying, here comes the kingdom. Here comes the kingdom. And then we're going to read as we go on. The Lamb of God was taken away to sin in the world. They want a king. But in order to be born as a nation again, they've got to have that first rank of coming out of Egypt, and that was the Passover night by killing those lambs. Israel has had the scriptures and the prophecies all messed up. Even for a while, and it's pretty much lost among the Jewish people today, when a child is 14 years old and he gets bar mitzvah. That is supposed to believe the Messiah. Just in case your son is the Messiah. Now they have it for girls. 
So this is all messed up today. He said, this is he of whom I spake. So John's already preaching to the people about Jesus. He that cometh after me is preferred before me, for he was before me. Now we're going to look at verse 15, and that is a whole bunch of... Uh, you got to rightly divide the word of truth. And you've got to see the truth to realize what John is saying. Mm -hmm. So, he is Jesus, me is John. To be preferred is regarded above all others. So when he says, he is preferred before me, there is a regard in Jesus by God by all. Now, John the Baptist is regarded by God. There is prophecy in Isaiah chapter 40 about John the Baptist coming. But there's something more important than John the Baptist. There's Jesus Christ. Now, he was before me, John said. Look at Luke chapter 1, verse 13. Now the breeze is coming. We need to open up our Bible and keep our pages straight. Oh, I'm going wrong there. Luke 1, 13. He says, before me, we got a problem. When you rightly divide the Scripture, and you study the Scripture with the Scripture, so you don't read your Bible and say, okay, i got the three chapters done for today, and I'll read three chapters tomorrow, and then three chapters and three chapters. And you look, I read through the Bible through in a year. But did you learn anything? Oh, I'm supposed to, I'm supposed to learn something by reading? I just read it through the year. Everybody said, read your Bible through the year. The Bible says, study. Mm -hmm. Study your Bible. Mm -hmm. And nowhere in the Bible does it say study through the year, but it says study. Luke chapter 1, verse 13, the Bible said, But the angel said unto him, Fear not, Zacharias. I can only get that name. For thy prayer is heard, and thy wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son, and thou shalt call his name John. That's the same John, John the Baptist. Okay? Now 31. Same chapter 31. Verse 31. Behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and shalt bring forth a son, and shalt call his name Jesus. There's John, and there's Jesus. Two different males, two different people. Okay? Verse 36. Same chapter. And behold, thy cousin... Talking to Mary. Mary, you have a cousin. Name Elizabeth. That's John the Baptist's father. I'm mother, excuse me. Mm -hmm. I don't know what relation it is, but Mary, the mother of Jesus, and Elizabeth, the mother of John the Baptist, are cousins. Mm -hmm. Jesus and John are related. After, I, don't know what, I don't know what family relations are for that. But their mothers were cousins. I mean, you can figure it out. Mm -hmm. They're the same family. Now, if they're the same family, we read, you can go back to Luke chapter 1 on your own. John's father, Zacharias, is in the temple offering the incense. He's a priest after the order of Aaron. Mary is of Judah, of David, for the king. Jesus has in his family blood, the blood of Aaron. And the blood of Judah, the priest and the kingly line, if these two are cousins, but then we'll keep going. She had also conceived a son in her old age, and this is the sixth month with her, who is called barren. So at the time that Gabriel comes to Mary, it's been six months since Elizabeth has been pregnant. Elizabeth is six months pregnant. Now Mary is going to be is now. Mary right now by the Holy Spirit is pregnant with, the whole, with God by the Holy Spirit. John the Baptist is six months older than Jesus. Right there. So when we go back to John, we got a weird statement in verse 15. He bear witness that this was he whom I spoke, he whom after me preferred me, before me, and he was before me. John is six months before Jesus, according to a physical birth date. 
So when John is referring to here comes this man named Jesus, and he's speaking to the Israelites, he is saying that Jesus walked up and says, you see that man right there? Not only is he the Lamb of God, but he's preferred before me. Though we're cousins, I'm going to say cousins. I am six months older than he is, but he, he is preferred. That means God has a special mark on that man, and he is before me. Physical date, yes. No. Not that this is John six months older. But in the eternal sense, John is saying, that is God right here coming. Yeah, he is before he may have been born after me, but before me, he's always been. John has proclaimed to the people, there's God right there. Listen, they would know the dates of the birth because he would have to go to the temple. John and Jesus on the eighth day would have to be circumcised, and that would be recorded somewhere. And the priest would have to do the ceremony for the circumcision. And then you have to keep counting the calendars for the mothers to bring the lamb or the, the, uh, the birds for their sin off. It's all recorded. It is common known sense that, all right, here's this man, John the Baptist, when he look, they look at the documentation, this is where he's born, this is his family. Blah, blah. And now here comes another man named Jesus. Wait a minute. He was born after you, John. I know. But he is before me. There's only one other statement you can get. John's saying, that's God. And that takes care of uh, universalism, and that takes care of, of Jehovah, witnesses. John is proclaiming, there's God right there. Here we come. And the Jewish people would know that reckoning for their birthday. Why? Have you not ever read Numbers and Chronicles? Have you not fallen asleep on that? And when Paul tells Timothy and Titus of endless genealogy, forget about this. There's only been one genealogy recorded in Matthew and Luke, that of Jesus Christ. You don't need any other genealogy. Now the Jews don't know who they are today. And God is somehow going to have to reveal it to them so when the temple comes, the right family can do what their right proper job that only the priests and the Levites can do that temple service. And more so, especially so when Jesus has the temple served. Jesus cannot have anybody not outside the family of Aaron to do this, and specifically has to be made of. So, when we look at, he say he is preferred and before me, we're not going to do it, but we need to go back to John chapter 1, verse 10 again of all our study, and remember how we looked at Jesus there in the creation. That's what John means he's performing. And the gut the uh, now remember John the Baptist and the, the, the John who wrote the Gospel of John are not the same John. And when the Apostle John writes chapter 1, verses 1 through 10, that Jesus is the man, is the God before time, even before man. In verse 15, that is the same statement by John the Baptist outside the writer of the Gospel of John. How can you not say that Jesus is not God? And when you get a new convert who has just received Christ as a Savior, or you have somebody who is an agnostic, and they are leaning to God, but they just don't understand yet, you have them open up to the Gospel of Genesis. Not Genesis yet. Read, into, read one chapter a night of John and pray over it. Well, I'm going to read my Bible all the way through again. Yeah. Who ever came up with that? Find me the scripture. You're newly saved. Okay, say, look, say, Lord God, I'm going to read John chapter 1 today. I have no idea. I, I'm newly saved or I don't know you. I, I, chapter 1, here I go, Lord. And then 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And the Lord will show himself through the gospel of John to those that are looking. If you are truly looking, when you come to the last chapter of the gospel of John, and you haven't done anything, you, you don't want to do anything. Well, you outright rejected God, but what I'm trying to say is, in the long form, is first 15 verses of, of John chapter 1, you cannot say that Jesus is not God. And by the first 15 chapters, you got a guy, well, I'm not sure, God. Wow. 
And in the revelation to God to a man who's really looking, God would spell out to him in 15 verses, Jesus is God. A man who's just gotten saved and trusting God. He gets through in the beginning. And then if he doesn't get it this time, then when he starts reading the Bible through, he starts reading the Bible from Genesis, he's going to start in the beginning. I saw that in Genesis. The man that's in chapter 1 is in Genesis chapter 1. So, God. And we're not looking at a birth age here. A chapter, a verse 15 in chapter 1. And it's quite interesting because I just did a birthday message yesterday and I never planned yesterday and never planned today. That birthday message, I just, you know what, I did out of one. I want to do it now. I've got other ones I want to do. And we look at birthdays and all that. We're not looking at a birthday in verse 15. We're looking at the eternal presence. So he was before me. Jesus is pre-Genesis 1-1. Not John. God is Jesus and Jesus is God. And he also says that man Jesus that's coming. According to what the writing is. Is that man coming? Here's God right there. Here he comes. And that man, though, he, though I am six months older than he is, he's before me. 116. And of his, Jesus, fullness have all we received great for grace. Now fullness means complete. You got a glass and you full, you fill it full. It's complete. Whatever you, you know, ice tea, soda, whatever you got. You fill that cup, that glass, that pot, that pan full. Fill. It's complete. Fullness. That's where we get the word it's full. When you fill your car up with gas, it says F full. Well, all, that all is not all people. Sometimes all is not all, as people say, they teach the Bible, all is all, that is all. That's John the disciple, now an apostle, writing about the apostle. All, we, we, we receive, John, and the eleven. We the eleven. Grace for grace. More abundant. Grace for grace. More abundant. Grace. More and more. That's what, that's what we, we didn't get just grace. We got grace. And we got more grace. And more grace. Do you realize when you read the life of those twelve, including Judas, do you realize the patience Jesus had to have with them? Jesus come up and say, you know what? Let me tell you something, guys. Hold on, listen to me now. Listen to me. They're going to take me. They're going to mock me. They're going to abuse me. They're going to spit upon me. And they're going to kill me. And they're going to put me in the grave for three days and three nights, such as Jonah. For three days and three nights and hard earth. I'm going to come out. Lord, who's the greatest? They never got his messages. All the time that when it says that Jesus Christ suffered and died according to the scriptures and was buried and arose again the third day according to the scriptures, you know, you realize some of those scriptures are what Jesus said out of his own mouth to his own disciples. And how many of those disciples were at that rock? None. They didn't get it. I mean, isn't that not patience? And you get pastors get upset. Well, the church ain't listening to me. They're not doing what I told you to do. 100% of the disciples didn't do what Jesus told them to do. None of them were at the rock. One was at the cross. John, the one we're reading about right now. So don't cry baby with the ministry because your church ain't doing what you're preaching. They ain't the apostles they didn't do anything that what Jesus told them to the do. When the resurrection day should be, they're hiding up in the, in the upper room with the doors locked. And then when Jesus came to that door, he had to, uh, uh, he had to scold them out because they didn't believe what the women said. The women come and we saw, we saw these two men, these two angels, and I spoke to Jesus. He's alive. Oh, lady, uh, what's your problem? And according to scriptures, that's what he told me he would do. So grace for grace, I mean, they're battling out. They get angry with each other. They're scolding each other. 
John says there are more things happening in the life of Jesus that, that is recorded. And I'm, I'm saying, listen, I've been with fishermen, well, lobster men. I know how they are. You got four of them. There were fights all the time. And you got a tax collector among them. They're fighting all the time. Then you got the devil with them, but they don't know who it is. They're fighting all the time. Paul got upset for whatever reason Mark went home on, on the missionary trip. You know the disciples, and what's that grace for grace? It'd be like Moses dealing with the Israelites. Only not a million, a billion of them. Twelve of them. That was enough for Jesus. And don't forget the Sadducees and the, and the Pharisees and the scribes that gave him a hard time. And never mind the people that he healed that didn't come back to thank him, but one. Ten lepers got healed and only one came back to thank him. Grace for grace. Don't ever call me Jesus. Don't ever call me the Savior of God because I ain't got the patience. So, verse 17. For the law, this ought to be a clue, was given by Moses. What's the law? Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. Who wrote Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy? Moses. So we're looking at a period that the law is given by Moses. Alright? Now people who try to put Christians under the law. Ready? Mm -hmm. But, now, there are a few key words in the Bible that you need to recognize. When God says, verily, verily, that means pay attention. This is very important. Parentheses are, this is an important note. Now you need to pay attention to buts in the Bible. There could be good buts. There could be bad buts. The greatest but in the Bible is but God. You need to mark them. And it's funny, I'm going through my Bible and how I mark my, my study, but I, I, I got, a, I think it's a red triangle, and I always say, oh, red, and it ends up as a red butt. It doesn't sound good, but it is good. But means I have made a statement that something else is going to be. There is the fool, but the wisdom. There's condemnation, but God. So what? There's the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Now that does not tell you we're not under the law. What is it? All right, now... And you got to understand, I'm, I'm going to say from the ministry of Jesus, and I could be, it could be the birth of Jesus, but I'm going to say from the ministry, for 30 to 33 and a half years old of Jesus, I don't know what dispensation you were in. As far as just recording, I, and I've heard the say, but I don't know about worldwide, no one died when Jesus was around. When they did die, he resurrected them. I don't know about North America. Okay? I thought about that. But when you are in the period when Jesus is in his ministry, what happened when you, if you did die without believing that there he is manifested? You're still under the law. When he, when he healed one of those, those men of leprosy, he said, go to the priest and do what the law prescribes. Those are 13 and 14. After the death, burial, and resurrection, and as you go through the transition of the book of Acts, it leaves the law and goes through grace and truth. Once you start dealing with Jews, early in the book, it, it, it's law, because, you know, they're coming out of the law. But when you close in the book of Acts, it's no more law. It's salvation by grace through faith without the works of the law. And there's a book written uh, by Paul to one of the churches that had gone back in the law. He said, oh foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you. You're a fool to go back into the law. On this side of Calvary, it's not the law. The law proves you to be a sinner, but the law can't save you. Now we're going to get to another problem, not us Christians, but the event that's going to happen is when the church is gone and the tribulation period is back. Well, I mean, it's here, not back. It's 
you are also under law with the temple and the priests and the offers, offering back. And I would so think that the devil would be so slick, and I don't know, that in the tribulation period he's going to preach. It's not works of the law, but by the grace of Jesus Christ. It's completely opposite. Because right now he teaches the law. He the commandment, be a good person, do this, do that. That's not today. It's by the merit, not of works, least any man boasts. That's coming back. But not in the church age. So the law is going out for a period of time. It will be back. So verse 17. The law is Moses. Grace and truth is Jesus. The law will be not the means to be right with God any longer. Look at John 14, 6. This I, I preach. John 14, 6. If we are under the law, John 14, 6 would be a whole total different story. Jesus said unto them, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. There's no law. It's Jesus. How do I go to heaven? Jesus. I was a good person. You're not Jesus. I go to church. No, Jesus said, I'm the way. I got a battlement around my roof. Jesus said, I'm the way. I have not killed anybody. Jesus said, I'm the way. Yes, you have. You thought about it. The Bible says, if you ever have hate against anybody, you murder. Hate equals murdering. Lust equals coveting, Paul says. We are now in a period during the church age from now to the tribulation period where the church where the church will be raptured before the tribulation period. We are in a period that is only by Jesus Christ. Now the law will show me. All right, let's look at let's look at a very basic law. Honor thy father and mother. I have not done that all my life. Okay. The law showed me I'm guilty. Now how can the law save me? I can't go bring an animal to the brazen altar in Jerusalem. It's not there. The dumb of the rock is there right now. Alright, thou shalt not bear false witness. I've lied. How about coveting? Right, let's try this one. You've been watching TV, here comes a commercial. You're like, ooh, I like that. That looks good. When I worked for Dunkin' Donuts, people would get in their car and say, I just saw your new sandwich on the television, I have to have it. Coveting. Just because I saw on TV, I like it. Coveting. Oh, I like my I like my neighbor's lawnmower. Coveting. Oh, she looks nice. Adultery. The law shows you guilty, and John fourteen six says Jesus says I am the way. No more law. For now, during the church age. And when you've done any public ministry, you're going to meet those people. I'm good. I do this. I go to church. I'm in baptized. Do 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 do. It's already what Christ has done. Christ has fulfilled the law 100%. No one else can do that. That's John 1. So the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth, match that with John 14, 6, came by Jesus. So, it's given by God. Moses got the law from God. Twice. He broke the first commandment. The first lawbreaker was Moses. He came out to bust those things by then having a golden calf. Maybe they all dressed like a cow. But grace and truth came by Jesus. Now who is Jesus that we studied in chapter 1? Is that not God? Grace and truth came by Jesus. Didn't we study a couple weeks ago that God cannot, will not, and is unable to lie? Remember we did that thing? Look how it shows up in verse 17. My whole all of my salvation, I am going to heaven. It's not by what I've done. Not by what my mother's done, my grandparents have done. It's by what Jesus has done, and I am trusting that he has not lied to me about it. There's no bragging. When the Bible says, not a worse leaves any man brag, I'm not going to go to heaven and say, well, you know, I had more outdoor meetings than you had. 
And there are churches out there, well, no, we do this, we do that, look how much time we do it, look how many people we got saved, look how many this we do, look at, look at each We had one church we went to, we were touted when we went to the pastor's house for Christmas. They were tapping our heads at the door. Ridiculous. It's what Christ has done, not what we've done. We're going to sing and fellowship rightly to Jesus and God on the throne, not to anybody else. So, the law and Moses, and we're not going to look at it, but Exodus 20 verses 1 through 26 is the big Ten Commandments. And when you have, and I had one person tell me he's kept the law. You can't get by the first commandment. The first commandment, and I'm, I'm going to break it down so you understand. It's God first, all the time, and every time. You don't do that when you get up in the morning. Try 3 o'clock in the morning, you just woke up and your bladder says, we got to go. And you've just got your mind on Jesus. Really? I'm telling my bladder, knock it off, I want another hour of sleep. You know? We failed the first commandment. Somebody gets in my face, I'm street preaching for the Lord God. I'm sorry to tell you, most of the time, my first thing is not thinking about God and praying. You just got hit with something very hard in your life. Whatever it is, an injury, whatever it is. A bad phone call. Do you think about God? Then you fail. God's already thought about it. How did God think about it? For God so loved the world that he gave the only begotten Son that he so believed which should not perish. And then there's scripture, I, I don't know it, but I should. He loved us before we loved him. That's right. Now look at that. God was thinking about us first before we thought about Him first. And we're saved. We're, we're in the body of Christ. We're Christians. We study the Bible. And we don't even think of Him first. Aren't you glad you're not saved by the law? Because <laughs> you would fail. And a lot of those Jews, when they went to the temple, they brought that cow, they brought the... You know why they had to do the Day of Atonement every year, once a year, every year, and the priest had to go in first for himself and then go in for the people? Because every day you sin. And you sin. And you sin. And it said he cannot take away the sins of the world. Well, here comes the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. All the law was to say, you're guilty. Now pay the fine. You can't. Until Christ came. And then uh, John 3.16 For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. Let's look at uh, Matthew 5.17 Matthew 5.17 God has done what we can't do giving something to us that He knew we couldn't do. Now think about that. That made me a little confusing for a while. 5.17 Think now that I have come to destroy the law? Oh, Calvary. No more law. I can do whatever I want. I'm a Christian. I can do whatever sin I want. And there are people out there who do that. I just was listening to a person I listened to on YouTube talking about a big mega church. This woman can sleep with anybody she wants. How dare you question her? Mm. But, but, wait a minute, wait a minute. I didn't finish that verse. Did I? Think not that I come to destroy the law or the prophets. That's the Old Testament outside of the law of Moses. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy is the law. Joshua to Malachi is the prophet. Okay? I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. What we can't do in the law, Christ has done, so now we can come to Christ and say, God, I got this one particular sin in my life, I ain't going to say what it is. I know, I watched you. Well, that makes me a sinner, I know. There's nothing I can do, absolutely correct. I got to confess my sins, and you're faithful and just to forgive me, correctly. I'm going to battle that sin. God would be so unholy and just if He gave me one sin that I go to hell because I can't keep it. 
That's how much He loves me. We all have one sin in our life. The law said, guilty. Christ says, I did all that. I came out right. And when somebody goes to you, oh, I'm good. No, the only good one is Christ, because He did it all without failure to God. Luke 20, uh, wait a minute, 18, verse 18 too. For very I say unto you, to heaven and earth pass one tittle, uh, one jot or one tittle, shall we no wise pass from the law to all be fulfilled. The Bible is going to be fulfilled 100%. If God says there's a time coming Jacob's trouble, there's Jacob's trouble coming. If Paul writes to us that Christ is going to come for his church, he's coming for his church. If the Bible writes about Jesus Christ getting on a horse, King of kings and Lord of lords, he's coming. If the Bible says there's a new heaven, new earth, new Jerusalem coming out of the sky, it's coming. Plain and simple. All right, uh, Luke 24, 44. It's coming. There is coming a day. Well, guess what? That day came because the Bible says it's coming. It's coming. I can, I can make a prophecy if you want me to. I'll tell you. Here's my prophecy. You ready? I'm going to tell you who's going to die. All people are going to die. For all I've seen from the short of glory of God and the way you've seen is death. I just can't tell you when. But God has his court. Luke 24, 44. And he said unto him, Jesus, these are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. So when the Bible says Jesus Christ suffered and died according to the scriptures, it happened. He was buried, it happened. And he arose again from the dead, it happened. The rapture's coming, Paul said. You know how much you know how well I know the rapture's coming? You know how much faith I have? He put a little PS at the end of first Thessalonians chapter four. He said, listen, the dead in Christ shall rise, those are come. You know what he said? He put a little PS that says, Comfort one another with you. The entire book of Revelation in the book of Daniel has either happened, is happening, or it will happen. By what Jesus Christ, because we learn He's the truth. He has told us. And He's not going to lie to us. One day, sometime out in eternity, we're going to be in New Jerusalem. The gates are always going to be open. And we're going to be standing before God in His Son, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. And we're going to be worshiping Him with the angels that did not fall, with the cherubim, the four of them, forever. Israel will be a nation in the, ap in the apple of God's eye again. God has not forsaken them forever. He had that forever. And that's why the one that John, right now where we are, here comes God. You can't say that about him. We've had a guy come, oh, I'm God. No, you're not. Mm. You just lied. Lord God, thank you for being God. Thank you for being holy and righteous, Lord, we're not. Thank you, Lord, to be what we cannot be. And yet in you is all in all, Lord. For Jesus' sake, we pray. Amen. Amen.